I've been watching real estate shows for the past 72 hours. <laughs> I've been watching real estate shows based in LA, million dollar listing, uh, selling sunset. And what I like about these shows is they're not about anything. Uh, none of the characters are particularly memorable. They all try to be. That's the thing with like these reality shows. They try to be quirky or different, but they're not. Um, the only reason people watch these is it's real estate porn and they shoot the houses so beautifully and everything about LA is sun drenched and gorgeous. And then it's, and then when you walk around, I like even some of these nice houses, they're just boxes and dirt. That's what a lot of them are, especially when you go up into the Hollywood Hills. They're just concrete boxes that someone stuck in a mound of cat litter and they put little infinity pools outside and everybody pays $10 million to live there. But it's really, when you see it, it do, it's not nearly as impressive as this beautiful, seductive style of shooting where, because Ben always tells me, oh, we can't shoot in the middle of the day because it's too sunny. But somehow the Bravo team has found a way to like, like it's sexual. And they, dr so why is that? Why can we never do it, but they can do it? Is because their equipment is better? Well, they have a $40,000 camera. You okay, know. so that's that's what. Why do you talk like that? Well, how am I talking? The, you're attack, you're gonna, da, da. You don't talk like that in real life. You go they have a, they have a forty thousand. I didn't you talk like deep and. I listen go, back. I don't think a, I sound like that. Have, you never speak the way you're speaking right now. I listen back. I don't think I sound. These fucking shows, they're so vapid. And they're not real. Mm -hmm. Like none of the negotiations are real because the negotiations are all very like, you're at 10-5. We got to find a way to get to 13. We got to find a way to get to 13-5. We're a million apart. It's too far. We're just too far apart. We got to make a deal work. But the real negotiations I feel like are like, listen, this is all Chinese blood money. <laughs> they can't get this amount of money out of the country immediately. You're going to need to fucking take a few contingencies on this deal, Okay. This guy's on the fucking run. He just poisoned a river. <laughs> they want him for genocide, but he loves infinity pools. So he wants this property, but he could be in the UN criminal court soon at the Hague. I mean, they want him for torture. I mean, literally, but he adores this property. He likes the finishes. He loves the onyx table. He loves that it's got multiple exposures. He loves that it's one of the best streets in Beverly Hills. But you got to give him some time to get the money out of the country because he's being accused of genocide. <laughs> he's just being accused of genocide. But he adores that he can get 3,000 feet of outdoor living space because that's a lot to get. I explained this to him. I explained this to him while he was sawing off the arm of one of his political opponents. I said, will you just cut the buzz saw down for a minute and listen to me? You're getting 3,000 feet of outdoor living space in the hills. This is big. No one gets this. Not for this price point. Because that's who's buying a lot of these properties. It's dictators. It's blood money. A lot of this is blood. That's why the real estate show should just be called blood money. Mm -hmm. It should be called blood money. And it should be about people talking about that. They now have to sell these high end properties to uh third world, the dictators of third world countries. Mm -hmm. That's what the show should be. It should be blood money. You should be like, there's a lot of powerful people in the world. And sometimes they have to leave their countries after a coup, but they love the sexy Los Angeles sun. So we're selling them hot properties. Sure, many of them have been accused credibly of genocide and <laughs> poisoning entire races of people. But one thing they love is a nice view. So come on and watch Blood Money. They'll be like, the only people that can really afford these high, and it'll just be a realtor, it'll be like a good looking realtor mm -hmm. with like hot Manolo Blahnik shoes. She'll be sitting on Sunset Boulevard and she'll be like, you know, some of the only people that can afford these properties right now are murderers. I mean, real murderers. <laughs> I'm not even talking about OJ. I mean, they've done shit. I'm talking about biblical 
proportions. I mean, they have laid down hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, but they're coming in. Like Michael Bloomberg, I remember, who like delusional people think is going to be the president. Like how nuts do you have to be to think Bloomberg has a shot? Or how rich? Because that's also, I have fr uh, my friend's parents are very wealthy and they're like, we like Bloomberg. And it's like, yeah, of course you do. Um, so how rich or how insane do you have to be to think Bloomberg is a shot? Bloomberg said about New York City, he's like, bring all the billionaires. We want them all. We want them all. And like, you have to realize it's like, yeah, but some of them have done some dirty deeds. You know, we want all of the billionaires. So what? They've, you know, poisoned people in their own country. They like shrimp cocktail. They like steak. Let them come here. We'll get them a beautiful penthouse. But that's what it should be called. It should just be called blood money. You know? Selling the high, you know, because that's what we're doing. We're just selling the rest of New York and LA to people, a lot of them who've earned their money by grinding people into a paste. <laughs> So that they have the kind of money where they can come over here because they go, you know, I ground everyone into a paste. Everybody's upset about it, but I want my kids to go to NYU. Mm -hmm. So I want to get something nice in Tribeca. You know, my kids love Gossip Girl. My daughters love Gossip Girl. So I want to get something on the Upper East Side. You know, my daughters are just huge fans of the Hills. They love, you know, they just, they just want to watch it. So, but that is literally when I did this show on a tour bus in New York city, where we rented out a double decker bus and took it through New York, we would point out where these like Russian fertilizer magnets lived and these, you know, Chinese amusement park tycoons and, you know, Russian gangsters. And a lot of these people were gangsters. And I don't even mean, I'm not one of these guys who just says, oh, if you're a billionaire, you're necessarily a murderer. That's not the worst, by the way. I mean, you'd, you would, if you were throwing a dartboard, it, there's, there's a lot, you know, if you threw a, a dartboard at, if you threw darts at a bunch of billionaires on a board, you would hit a few murderers pretty quickly. But I'm not one of those guys who's like, oh, you're necessarily like an evil guy. But the, a lot of these people that were just stashing their money in real estate in New York or LA were actually really like nefarious characters that had, you know, one guy that lived in the time Warner center had poisoned a river in Zambia. Like he was a, a was a mining magnet. I think his name was Anit Agarwal. He was a mining magnet and he had basically, you know, he was like, you know, somebody who had done some really, deadly things with the waste <laughs> that his like mind produced. And he, he, they wanted, they want, they was like, he was literally being accused of like a genocide or at least like poisoning a river and killing a bunch of people. And then just the idea that, you know, he, he came over to New York and, and, and that's why he didn't want, this is why real estate in New York or LA is so attractive to these people is that number one, they don't buy it under their own name. Like nobody gets real estate under their name. They get it under a shell corp. And a shell corp is a corporation that is formed usually for, ex for the express purposes of buying real estate. It could be for investing in a company. You could set up a shell corp to invest in a startup or something like that. But usually it's a corporation where you don't have a fit, like the physical address is different from your address. And it's not, you know, you have to jump through a lot of hoops to find out who the Shell Corp is registered to. A lot of these people have addresses that came in islands or whatever. It's a great way to just move money around. And when you're buying real estate in places like New York or London, you know, half of new construction in London has gone to foreign nationals. A lot of it in New York has gone to foreign nationals. You know, I think at one point in New York City, half of the real estate market was, was foreign nationals. Half of the entire market. And it bumped the condo prices up. The average condo price was like over $2 million. And... You're like, well, why are all these people buying all this real estate? Because number one, it's a good asset. It's a hard asset. You can live in it. You can rent it out. But also, it's a great way to evade taxes. This is just a great way to get the, get your, the money out of your country. It's a good way to get the money out of the country and hide it. And God only knows where you made it. You could, you know, it could be drugs and narco trafficking, yeah, human trafficking, narco terrorism. Could be just, you know, 
good old fashioned, you know, the, the wild west of natural gas in Kazakhstan where God only knows what's happening. You know, it's like God only knows where the money's coming from. Nobody cares. Nobody in the real estate market cares. These people don't care. They're not asking questions. And I get it. They're just not asking questions. You look at these people, you're making a lot of money and they're just not asking questions where the money comes. They don't care where the money comes from. They don't care. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to them. Someone sold Epstein that island. Someone sold him that island. There should be a show where realtors show pedophile billionaires islands. <laughs> you know? And it should be called Million Dollar Fisting. <laughs> where just, you know, realtors are like, realtors are like, it would start like this. You'd be like, there's a certain type of person that loves luxury, but even more than luxury, they love privacy. <laughs> These are some of the top island brokers in the world. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to just have an apartment or a beautiful estate. These people need their own private island with a private heliport where they can go and come as they please and take whoever the hell they want there. Welcome to Million Dollar Fisting. It would just be some chick who's like, you know, I was trafficked to one of these islands as a girl and I realized that I loved real estate. I just had an eye for it and I understood why the island was perfect. It was just private. It was in the middle of the Virgin Islands. I was just, you know, in love with the beaches. I, I, I love that it was just, you know, I think it was about 75 acres and, you know, it had several places where we could dock boats and it was just, it was just one of those islands. So many of the traffic girls, unfortunately, you know, went into lives of crime or drugs, but I really just got into the idea of selling high-end islands to pedophiles. So that's what I do now. I know more islands uh, than anyone else. I know the ins and outs of an island. And it would just be a, you know, a realtor just showing, you know, showing somebody around like an island, like little St. James and being like, you know, hey, how are you guys? Oh, it's good to meet you. How are you? Hello. Hi, Senator. How are you? I think what you really love about this island, I was listening to everything you told me and I really started to think about it. And I think this is really the perfect property for you. It's very private. It has a heliport right near the house. So there's not a long walk between the heliport to the house. And I know that's a concern for you, you know, because, you know, who knows what state people are going to be arriving here in, okay? You've got great 360-degree views from your bedroom. So you can walk out on the deck and see who's coming in from where. And that's super important, you know? They've also got a lot of different boat slips here. It's a quick, you can make a quick getaway. It's really great. And I just think it's super, there's a lot of underground space, which I know is super important to you. It's super important to have underground space, you know? You could really construct anything here. We're talking about, you know, four or 5,000 square feet of underground living space with absolutely no light coming in. It's a very kind of medieval dungeon feel. I just think that's something that you guys would really like, you know? The price is about, it's about 30 million. I know it's a little more than you were looking to spend, but there is some wiggle room. This uh, is owned currently by a Saudi prince, but he wants to get rid of it. He's upgrading his operation right now. <laughs> And so there is a little wiggle room on price. So do you want, maybe, are you interested? Because I could just call him right now. Hi, how are you? Great. Listen, I have my client right here. He absolutely loves it. He adores the underground dungeon space. Okay, we're coming in right now at about 27.5. It's an all cash deal and we can close in two weeks. I don't know. He doesn't love that number. He doesn't love 27.5. I understand, but this is a qualified buyer. We're coming in all cash. There's no contingencies here. Oh, am I calling someone? <laughs> I'm just calling one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I just think I've lost my mind. But that's really what, like, that's that's where we're headed mm -hmm. with, like, a lot of these real estate shows. And I, I just love them. They're hypnotic. They hypnotize you, and you just look at, and, you know, there's these, they're all coked out, these fucking realtors. There's this one British guy's like, yeah. hey, look at this house. It's a stunning estate. It's a goddamn stunning estate. And you could just taste the chalk as it goes down his fucking throat. It's a stunning estate. I'm number one broker here in the Hollywood Hills.